This is an overview of a tool that I'm releasing called SM Channel Tools or Channel Tools, which is just a set of tools that make it easy to manipulate your channels in the channel box. Once the Channel Tools Python scripts have been imported, you can open up the basic UI by doing smchanneltools.ui. The UI allows you to quickly add channels, whether they be float or boolean or dividers, as well as manipulate, manipulate your channels for default, setting the defaults, locking and hiding, toggling the lock, showing and hiding your translate road to scale or your user channels, as well as moving your channels up and down. If I select this control here, you can see I have a very basic setup for showing and hiding parts of this character's body. But you can also see that they're out of order. If I was to go in here and grab this parts, I can just hit this button here and drop that channel to the bottom. And I can take the upper body and move it to the top and take the lower body and move it slightly down. And now I can go ahead and organize these. So the hips should be the part of the lower body, the legs should be part of the lower body, and the body I'm going to put into the upper body. I'm going to move the head to the top, and the body to the top. And as you can see, I can change where the channels are in the channel box without losing the connections to uh, my parts of the body that I've already created, as well as if they are keyed as they are, um, I don't lose those connections either. You can also add this set of buttons to the top of the channel box for easier access by going to the R&D menu and going down to Add Channel Buttons. You now have a set of buttons across the channel box that are similar to the buttons that are found in the UI. To quickly add channels to any selected object, you can just type the name in to the input field and hit Enter. You'll notice that the cursor stays within the field, so you can quickly go in and add as many channels as you want. Changing the selection does not remove anything from this field. You can also change the min-max to false. So instead of having 0 to 1, I can have 0 to 10 and add a channel that has now a 0 to, or negative 10 to 10 rather than a 0 to 1 default value, or min-max, sorry. You can also quickly add Boolean attributes. by clicking this button here. And lastly, you can add dividers. If you click the divider, it just puts a divider channel in here. And you can click it as many times as you like, and it'll constantly change the name so you don't end up with conflicting channels. You can also give those dividers a name. And you'll see that the name shows up here. If there's a conflict, it won't create the new channel. You can then move that channel to the top of your channel box and add another divider and put it in the right place. You also have the ability to add channels to other objects. If I was to select this object here and select this one with the channels that I want, I can select all these channels here and under R&D use the um, add selected channels and so now I have matching channels between them and all the settings should be the same. Um, if I have nothing selected when I do that, let's try this again. I can do a add all user channels and it will add all the user channels without me having to select them. To set the locked, keyable, or visibility status of channels, you can use these buttons here or these buttons across the top. If I select the translate channels of this object and hit the lock and hide button, it'll lock and hide only those channels. With nothing selected, it'll lock and hide all of the channels. Using the translate rotate scale or user channels, I can bring back the translate rotate scale with channels or the user channels that I just created. I can also right click and use the marking menu to bring back specific channels if I'd rather. This is also accessible from these channel buttons up here. This first one is the lock and hide. The second one is the show. If I click here, I will show simultaneously my translate rotate scale as well as my user channels. If I want, I can also right mouse button to get a marking menu to show just specific channels. The toggle button for toggling lock will toggle the, the lock on and off of whatever I have selected. Also, if I have no channels selected, it will toggle all of my channels. To make things easier, if you hold down shift, it'll lock all your channels, or hold down control, it'll unlock all your channels.
channels or just those channels you have selected. You can access this here as well and it has the same functionality. Holding shift will lock them all, holding control will unlock them all. The button next to it is just a quick way to unlock without holding any keys. To set the keyable status of channels, I can right click on the lock button and set unkeyable. I can also right click and set to keyable. The reset channels is a quick button to reset your channels back to their original defaults. If I take this object and move it, scale it, and set my channels here, by selecting that button, it'll put it back to 000111 and all the defaults for my user added channels. You can also change the default status of selected channels or all channels using this button here or by right mouse button on the reset channels button and go to set default values. Now, when I press the reset button, it'll reset to those new default values. If I don't like those values, I can just set new values and, oops, wrong button, <laughs> unset reset those values again, and now reset will set them to the new default values. The first button added to the channel box button is the key channel. If I just select this button, it'll key all channels. If I have channels selected and use shift, it'll only key the channels I have selected. If I have no channels selected and hold shift, it will not key any channels. Also, if I hold control and click, it'll only key channels that have been previously keyed. This is similar to how auto key works, except for that you're telling it when to actually key rather than when you make changes. You can also solo channels by selecting them and using the right mouse button marking menu to solo a channel. Now all the, all the channels will be muted and I'll only get the channel I had selected, in this case translate Y. To unsolo, I can right click again and say unsolo and return to having all my animation playing. The other functionality I've added is the ability to work with connecting channels in the channel box. So if I select these two objects and their translates and I say connect same channels, and they can be any channels, it doesn't have to be those, uh, I've now set up a relationship between the translate y, x, y, and z of the two objects. And I can take the second object and change it a little bit. So what I can do is use these inserts here. I have a whole bunch of nodes that can be put in there. So I can do an insert add, and what that does is it adds a plus minus average node between the two. So if I add a new item to this plus minus average, I can create a pseudo offset, or just an offset between them. Uh, conversely, instead of using a plus minus average, I can also use a add double linear. And that way I do get the channels directly accessible, uh, but I only get that on one uh, rather than multiple. Uh, I can also go in here and add a multiply divide. And so right now it's set to one, but let's say I do this to 1.5. Now when I move this object, the other one's gonna move by 1.5% or uh, multiplied by 1.5 uh, rather than being a one-to-one -one relationship. I can also go in there and add a clamp to that, so I can clamp it down. Let's do uh, a max of, of one and a min of negative one. And so now when I move this, that control is going to stay within that negative one to one range. If I open up the node editor, you can see how all these nodes have been added. And as I add them, see them add in. So let's go back to our, our channel box here and I will insert, um, well, let's do reverse, sure. So now I've got a reverse node at the very end there between the output of the clamp. Um, something I probably wouldn't do, but just for demo purposes, you can see how that works. Uh, I can do a connect between these two and if there's an offset already, I can do an insert with, or connect with offset. So now this object here will remain in its place and the add double linear that's placed between them automatically takes that value in there. Uh, if I have, let's say, let's move it up here, move it here, and of course do that to multiple channels at the same time. 
So you see how it didn't move there, but now I still have that relationship set up. And even though this has offset values, it does the scene here. The negate channel is just a way to quickly add a reverse between two selected channels on the same object, uh, which I find comes in very handy within the constraints. So if I have two objects here, uh, these two controls and this cube here, and I do a parent constraint between them, right now the weighting is set 50-50 between them, right? And you can change this, uh, you know, by hand. Uh, but if I go in here and select that parent constraint, select the two channels and do a negate channels, I now have a reverse setup relationship set up between the two of those. So if I want to finish this off, I can add a divider, uh, add a float to my cube here, and I will just connect that directly to the constraint. Let's see, what's it called? Parent. And to A, connect that. So now I actually have a channel on here that I can swap between the two uh, parents nicely. The match channel button is just to match similar channels between multiple objects. Uh, incidentally, if you have channels that you want to add to a second object, you can select your object you want to add to, select your first object, select those channels, and under R&D there is uh, add selected channels. So now both objects have the same channels. If I go in here and say zero these out, and then select this object, and select this object, and say match, now it has zeroed out my objects. Or what I can do is match, say, the rotates, or just the translate Y, or if I have no channels selected, it'll match all of them. And if I have multiple selections, it's the last selected object that will match everything to. Similar to that, I have a quick command for what I call minus one. So if I select these two channels, let's connect our translate Y. And then with the second object selected, I can go to insert minus one. And that just creates a negative relationship on our multiple linear by default, so I don't have to go in there and type it. So just to show that in action, I have a little tortoise here, and it does have channels on here that are all kind of messed up. Uh, I'm gonna leave them messed up so that I can show how this all works. So the first thing I need to do is connect these guys. So uh, um, let me take all of these and show their visibility so I know I can connect it. And then I'm gonna take this control here and drop it over here. And I'm gonna say so that's the right arm. This is the left arm, obviously. This is the right leg. And this is the left leg. Um, oh, did I miss it? There we go. Uh, that's the tail. And that's the head. There we go. And these are the neck. I don't think I have a neck channel, so I'm going to add that in. So I'll just select this, say neck. Cool, add that in. And what I'm going to do on this one, because I don't want it to hide the head when I hide the neck, I'm going to just select the curve shapes and connect directly to those. That way I can still show the head, even if the neck is, uh, is hidden. Makes sense, right? And what I'm going to do now is go and clean these channels up a little bit. So I'm going to take these guys, let's unlock those and delete them. I haven't put delete in there. I might eventually, I don't know. Um, we'll add a divider and put that to the top. Um, head and tail, tail should probably be at the bottom. Neck is going to go up and come down a little bit. Uh, left arm, let's put right arm above. Let's put right leg in, in handy. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to delete that. And there we go, cool. And the last thing I'm gonna do is make these unkeyable. So actually I can do that by going into my lock here and saying unkeyable. So now they're not technically keyable, um, you know, down the line when I'm working with this character. Um, don't want these, so I'll just lock and hide that. And now my turtle's ready to go.